Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa, where we take difficult biological concepts and make them easy to understand. Today, we will be discussing internal respiration. In my last video on gas exchange in the lungs, you learned about what external respiration is. To recap, external respiration, also known as pulmonary gas exchange, is the diffusion of oxygen from the air in the alveoli of the lungs to the blood in the pulmonary capillaries. It also includes the diffusion of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. Simply stated, this is the gas exchange that occurs in the lungs between the air you breathed in and the blood. In this video, we are going to focus on internal respiration. Maybe you can guess what that is. If you guess that internal respiration is gas exchange at the cellular level, you are correct. Internal respiration is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between system capillaries and the cells of the tissues. Internal respiration is also called systemic gas exchange. This is the exchange that happens within the body after gas exchange has occurred in the lungs. Let's take a closer look at how all this works. The right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. This is where external respiration occurs. Then that oxygenated blood comes back to the heart and is pumped out by the left ventricle into the aorta. This allows blood to enter into the systemic circulation. Blood travels from arteries to arterioles and then to capillaries where oxygen can diffuse from the capillaries to the cells and carbon dioxide can diffuse from the cells back to the capillaries and then enter back um, into the venous side to go back to the heart and start this cycle all over again. Why can this happen? The partial pressure of oxygen in the blood that is pumped through the systemic capillaries is higher than the partial pressure of oxygen in the tissues. This is because that blood, as we just discussed, has picked up oxygen from the lungs and is freshly oxygenated as it travels to the tissues. This allows oxygen to diffuse from higher concentration in the capillaries to lower concentration in the cells. While this happens, the opposite is true for the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and this allows carbon dioxide to travel from the cells to the interstitial fluid and then back into the capillaries. This exchange is why arterial blood appears bright red. It's rich in oxygen. By the time the blood reaches your veins, it's darker due to the lower oxygen content and higher levels of carbon dioxide. The deoxygenated blood returns to the heart through the veins and is then pumped to the lungs, back to the heart, and then back to the body for another cycle of internal respiration. Once this oxygen reaches the cells, the cells can then use this oxygen in order to undergo cellular respiration and with that oxygen in the presence of glucose, make that energy necessary for the cell to do its work. So ATP can then be generated with the use of this oxygen. As the cell undergoes uh, cellular respiration and uses this oxygen uh, for its work, it's going to make carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And so carbon dioxide will build up and then that will have to exit out of the cell into the interstitial fluid and then be picked up by the capillary system to be able to eventually leave the body as waste. So this internal respiration is important for the cells to receive oxygen, to be able to make energy, to do their job, and then also to be able to release that carbon dioxide that they're making as a byproduct of cellular respiration so that carbon dioxide doesn't build up and can then leave the body as waste, basically when we exhale. Let's also explore some factors that influence the rate of gas exchange, both in your lungs, pulmonary, and throughout your body, systemic. The first factor that can influence the rate of gas exchange is the partial pressure differences of the gases. Gas exchange occurs because of differences in partial pressures. 
oxygen, and carbon dioxide move from areas of higher to lower pressure. Greater or lesser differences in partial pressure can change the rate at which gas exchange occurs. The surface area available for gas exchange can also influence the rate of gas exchange. The larger the surface area of the alveoli, or capillaries, the more gas exchange can occur. Diseases like emphysema reduce this surface area, which hinders efficiency. Diffusion distance also influences the rate of gas exchange. The respiratory membrane of the alveoli is very thin, so diffusion can occur quickly. The capillaries are also thin and narrow, which allows diffusion to occur quickly as well. In cases where there is a buildup of interstitial fluid, such as in pulmonary edema, this will slow the rate of gas exchange because it increases the diffusion distance. Thickened alveolar walls, as seen in conditions like pulmonary fibrosis, can also slow diffusion by increasing the distance. Molecular weight and solubility of gases can also influence the rate of gas exchange. Smaller, more soluble gases diffuse more quickly. Carbon dioxide, for instance, is more soluble in blood than oxygen, which helps it diffuse efficiently despite smaller partial pressure differences. And that's internal respiration in a nutshell. It's an incredible process that keeps your cells energized and your body functioning. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel to never miss out on a new video. Th thanks for watching.